It's Dr. Dev again, your cataract coach, with a relatively routine case. But what's interesting here is the patient has heterochromia, a sectoral heterochromia. So the temporal half of the iris is brown and pigmented, whereas the nasal half of the iris is blue and lacking pigmentation. The patient doesn't have any other issues going on with the eye other than a routine cataract. Installation of viscoelastic was done there. Now it's time for our temporal incision. Fixation ring to hold the eye, and we'll do a single plane incision here, just where those limbal vessels end of the cornea. To do the capsorexis, we want to aim for about a 5 millimeter, maybe 5.5 millimeter capsorexis. We use the forceps to pinch and grab so we don't need the cystotome. And we'll do our round rex here. Note that we float in the incision in order to not deflate the AC or we don't want to lose viscoelastic. And that should be just about right. Take your time, especially at the last step here, to make it as pretty and round as possible. We're going to do some hydro dissection here using some balanced salt solution on a blunt cannula. There's a good fluid wave. Note that we do lose viscoelastic when this happens, how viscoelastic comes out the incision. After a couple waves, let's try rotate, and that's great. So when the nucleus spins, we know it's going to be very much free from the capsule. A little extra, extra viscoelastic going in there to protect the endothelium. We'll adjust our phaco tip to have enough metal showing, great. And the reason is we need to have a good purchase on the nucleus in order to chop it. So we'll put the phaco probe in the eye, chopper's going in via the paracentesis, buzz the probe in, dig the chopper in, and break to two halves. Now we have two halves, and we separate them fully. In the first half, we can actually buzz in again and sub-chop. Now we have a quarter. Take out that qu first quarter, and then the piece below it, and we should have about half of the nucleus then remaining. We're using higher flow settings here, high vacuum, low phaco energy. This is not a very dense lens. Here comes the second half. We're trying to buzz into it just to bring it up with vacuum. There it is. Not quite, so we'll bring it up again. And so here we didn't get it chopped, and that's okay. It's relatively soft. We'll just push the piece in front of the phaco probe using the chopper. Note that the chopper is now in the safe position to prevent any uh, surge from causing the posterior capsule to come forwards. We'll switch to the IA probe. And this is also the time where I have the technician um, uh, start loading the lens. For the IA probe, here's using a coaxial one. A lot of people do bimanual. That works great too. Small chunk of nucleus we take out. Here's the remaining cortex. And I like to move in a circumferential manner to remove the lens cortex. And this way it comes off in large sheets. I'm also looking at the capsulorexis edge to make sure that doesn't move. Moving would be a sign of bad zonules. Now there is some subincisional cortex, which we can't quite get out just yet. You know what? That's not a problem. Let's leave it be. Put the lens in, and after the eye well is in the capsular bag, then we can remove that last bit of subincisional cortex. The beauty of putting the lens in first is it'll weigh down the capsular bag and push the posterior capsule away from us so we can grab that subincisional cortex without having to worry about the posterior capsule. There's filling the capsular bag with viscoelastic. We see our round capsulorexis. Here comes our lens. This is a preloaded single piece monofocal acrylic lens. And we open it up, there's the leading haptic and optic are being placed in the capsular bag. Chopper's being used here to dial the lens in the way we want it. So now the whole thing is going to go into the capsular bag just like that. And here's an important step to rotate the lens in order to help free up that subincisional cortex. As the haptic rubs across the subincisional cortex, it will free it up. The IA probe in the eye. We'll go here to the subincisional area. Looks like we're going behind the lens first to remove viscoelastic. Good. Center up the lens, and then there we go. We can grab the last of that subincisional cortex. So now we fully remove the cortex. Removing all the viscoelastic. Looks like we have a pretty good overlap of the 
rexus over the optic edge. Do remember that the capsular bag will shrink wrap down, and this capsular rexus will end up being a little bit smaller in the next couple of weeks. Well, hydration of the incision back and forth. We want to avoid doing too much hydration. Now through the paracentesis, making sure there's no retained viscoelastic or nuclear chunks. That looks great. Seal up the paracentesis, and we can put some sponges to check the incision. Make sure everything looks great. So interesting case in a patient with heterochromia.